Except something drastic is adopted, Nigeria may continue to wallow in a revenue quagmire regarding its main source of earnings, crude oil. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, has let it be known that the projected daily payment for fuel subsidy is 18.39 billion naira. Ahmed told lawmakers at the hearing of the House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating petrol subsidy between 2017 and 2021 that the total amount for the year will be about 6.72 trillion naira based on information from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, uh, pardon me, Petroleum Company, NNPC, and the regulator. While uh, the based this on the uh, average daily truck out of 64.96 million liters of fuel, she also said 1.774 trillion naira was paid to independent oil marketers as subsidy in four years. To compound the issue, the NNPC spent 54.66 billion naira on refinery rehabilitation in the first six months of the year. Okay, it's so alarming. It is. And, hmm. um, you know, at a time when we are going through serious um, solvency issues, financial solvency issues, this kind of startling figures is not what anybody wants to hear. We are in dire straits, the economy is on a cliff, and the earlier we find a way to end this drain on every one of us, the better. Mm. It is no longer funny. A country that is spending about 114% of its earnings to service debt, the debt to revenue ratio, We've always said that is what makes sense, not debt to GDP <laughs> ratio. Debt to GDP ratio is, is, um, is a farce, at least when you bring it to Nigeria. Maybe in other countries it's not a farce, but in our country it's a farce. Because the GDP ratio merely uh, gives the impression that, oh, we are such, I mean, that we are doing very well. But it's all about what you earn. Mm. Petrol is crude oil is our biggest earner. Unfortunately for us, we spend a huge chunk of what we earn from selling crude oil, even in a season of boom, when Russia has, has gone to Ukraine to, to fight a senseless war, we others are making money, we are not. Aramco of Saudi Arabia made $86 billion in six months. Let the NMPC tell us how much it made. On some months, NMPC did not even remit, remit mm. a dime to the Federation account, to the Consolidated Revenue account. So where does this leave us? Our biggest guzzler of foreign exchange is also petrol because you have to import petrol <laughs> using your hard hand forex to import petrol in the past we had buffers in form of the foreign reserve but when you look at a foreign reserve now we cannot use it as a buffer anymore because the funds there are simply not enough. Because if you have, we've been told now that we have about $15 billion. That's just enough for a few months' uh, imports. So what, what, what do we then do? And we will be watching the country spend this kind of money on subsidy, having nothing left. If this kind of money, because now we are told that subsidy would even go above six trillion how can we how can we live with this we've got to free the funds so that we can use it on something else we must not get to the point when we will even be borrowing money to pay 
taxes. Those taxes are denominated in foreign currency. It means that what you earn, you've got to you, you spend more of your domestic currency to service the Israeli with the Naira sliding. So it's a terrible situation that we find ourselves. I am not convinced that we consume that much. I am not convinced. <laughs> and I'm not the only one who is not convinced. I saw the number three man, the Senate president, say it openly that if we don't confront these people, one yeah. day they will come and tell us that it is actually 500 million liters that Nigerians are consuming. So, subsidy is an avenue through which a lot of people are lining their pockets. And we are simply powerless. That's why some of us want this subsidy to go. Ultimately, it has to go. This is not sustainable. It's just not sustainable anymore. To be feeding some people, well, so to be feeding fat from subsidies, lying to us about consumption levels and all that. I mean, it has to stop. It just has to stop. Adewale, let me have your take. 1.7 trillion Naira payments yeah. to independent marketers in four years. For Nigerians still feel the pinch? The question we should ask ourselves mm. is that what is the level of transparency in Nigerian political economy? Either from our own indices as Nigerians, how do we see the poor in power? And also from global reckoning. Nigeria is seen as one of the most corrupt countries. So if anybody is giving us figures from NAPC, we have the right to suspect such figures based on precedents. And these oil subsidy issues and all that, there have been series of reports that have proved over and over again that the whole thing is a scam. In 2012, the House of Rep is probing press subsidy now, but they've, we've forgotten that in 2012, they did the same thing. In fact, it was one honorable Abiodun Balogu that raised the motion. And the probe by Gabi Amela, the current mm. speaker, was the minority leader at that time. There was a pro panel. And that pro panel inducted a lot of NNPC officials, inducted the Minister of Petroleum, uh, Alizi Maduke, and in fact called for the removal of the you know, uh, Petroleum uh, Minister at that time. And that so, those NNPC officials should be dealt with. What happened to that report? 2012. In 2013, there was a Bennett Declaration that was reported all over the world that Nigeria lost about $7 billion through, you know, collaboration of some NPC officials and a Swiss company. It was, you know, a big, huge scandal. You know, they went and registered a company in uh, Bermuda where they start saving and all sorts of things and swindled the country up to the tune of $7 billion, 2013. So what are we talking? So, the, 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 you know, just like Baragide has said, we are being scammed, you know. Government needs to address basic things. Number one, we should not be producing crude oil and then be refining abroad. So we need to resolve the politics of, petrol, um, of, uh, the politics of uh, refinery um, you know, rehabilitation. We have five refineries. None of them is working up to full capacity. The first refinery that was built in this country in 1965 just about, well, uh, well, I think about, well, uh, about 100,000 barrels per day built in Portugal by Balawa's government. So if we want to build a, a modular refinery, that will not cost much that can refine as much as 100,000 barrels of oil per day. So if you look at the cost of um, you know, subsidizing uh, fuel consumption and not, uh, the, what we are going to spend in about one week or one month for subsidy, it's enough to start the process of putting, building a real refinery. Even we are going to forget about those four refineries. Mm. You know, let's say we even want to build a new one, which take about five to seven years. So unless we refine our products at home, it may be a long-term plan, but I don't see that foundation being laid now. Since you know, 1999, right. over 20 years. We need to think of a, a strategic long-term plan whereby we will to produce, you know, uh, Foil at home, refined foil at home. All right, gentlemen, let's quickly take Michael from Lagos. Hello, Michael. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, Baba Jide, please, I have a question for you uh, related with uh, this uh, oil theft. 
Yes. Are you aware a system the Nigerian Navy have in Lagos called Fakonai? No. Okay. There's this Fakon high system the Nigerian Navy has. There are no vessels, as far as Nigerian water is concerned, that the Fakon high in Lagos are not seen. Why will vessels that carry as much as 20 million, uh, 2 million metric tons of vessels come to steal our crew there? Then you tell us that those vessels, they are not being seen. Then you go and arrest a man. Who only stay, who only fetches uh, two drums of diesel on water, put inside his boat. You are arresting, you come and put it on national television that these are people who are busting by pipeline. When the major cabas that see this cool, cool uh, they come right. in tankers. Taking a, Thank you very much, uh, Michael. People Thank, are you. Not being... Thank you, Michael, for your contribution. Yeah, that's the point. Mm. The, the super tanker that came into our country to steal crude oil the other day. It was in uh, Equatorial Guinea that it was arrested. Within our own territorial waters, we couldn't arrest it. There is international collaboration in the theft of Nigeria's crude oil. If anyone says, and we are losing money, we are losing money because OPEC gave us a quota of 2 million barrels. Mm. We can't do 2 million barrels. We are only doing 1.2 million barrels. Now, if we were able to do 2 million barrels, you know that's extra revenue for us as a yes. country. But based on uh, oil theft and uh, the fact that some of the oil majors have even left Nigeria, we are unable to produce as much as we should produce. Therefore, we, are or we won't be able to earn enough. So if we permit people to bring giant vessels into our country, still up to 400,000 barrels of crude a day, because that's what we've been told by the minister, that they are stealing, on the average, 400,000 barrels of crude oil per day from Nigeria. Tell me one country that you know where their quantum of crude oil could be stolen, and people won't be facing the firing squad already. So without collaboration of those who should actually be catching them, this sort of thing will not be happening. So it's true that that sector, that sector is as clean as a sewage pit. Yeah. You know how clean a sewage pit is. <laughs> That's how clean that sector is. It's a sector that we have to pay attention to. The administration that is coming after this one has to make it a priority. Take a cognizance of what's going on now and pay attention to that sector. Because our, that's, our prosperity lies in that sector. But we are watching our prosperity go to ruins before our eyes. And things will get worse if we don't take concrete steps. Stop those who are stealing through the so-called uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, subsidy. Stop those who are stealing 400,000 barrels. Not gallons, who, <laughs> not Derrica. Not the Got <laughs> brothers. <laughs> oh, Sadi Wale, in 30 seconds, let me have your final take on this. Yeah, if we, you know, Nigeria built the final in 1965, mm. 30,000 barrels per day, 1965. We built in 1980, we built in 1979. We should have a strategy long plan, and we should start now. We should not wait for federal government. States, especially Lagos State, that has the capacity. She also think of building refineries. All right, thank you very much. Uh, yeah.